a bit weird. <laughs> Give it a good clap. Oh. Are we ready? Let's do it. <laughs> Expectation is a multi-genre production company that I set up with my partner, Peter Fincham, in 2017. We entered a, a, a competitive market with a lot of indies out there making great programs. And we make scripted and non-scripted shows. Comedy, drama, entertainment, comedy entertainment. So after I uh, left a, a sort of a corporate job, I suppose you'd call it, both Peter and I got together and thought it might be fun to set up an indie. I'd known Tim Hinks uh, for a good number of years, generally in a relationship where I was commissioning programmes and he was making them. But we also became uh, good friends because we played in a band together. The band was called No Expectations, which was an industry band where we encouraged celebrities and all sorts to play with us. And we're much missed. And just to assure our fans out there, we will be back soon. Who suggested it? Was it you, Oh, I don't know. Uh, I don't know who actually suggested it between the two of us. Um, we, we, work, we work hand in glove. We speak with one voice. So uh, uh, I reckon we just agreed it together. There's a Rolling Stones song called No Expectations on their excellent Beggar's Banquet album that we loved. I think it was Peter's idea to call the company Expectation, but I was immediately in. Tim gave me credit. All right, I, it's funny. The truth is I suggested it, but I don't want to take credit because Tim and I, it's all the two of us together. <laughs> <laughs> he was at Endemol, or Endemol Shine, as it had recently become as a sort of worldwide creative head. I was the director of television at ITV, and purely by coincidence, we had a breakfast together one day and a kind of routine thing to do. And I said, Peter, you're a friend, and, and so I don't think I can really pitch you any shows today without telling you the truth. I could, you know, you, I know you too well. I've just resigned, and so my life's about to change hugely. And Peter said, Well, that's really weird, because so did I. And Peter said, what are you going to do next? And I said, which is the truth, I've no idea. I just know that it's time to leave, but I've no idea. And he said, well, what about we did something together? We were both leaving large organisations because, you know, we'd done this before, that what this is all about is the people and the people who get involved and then the ideas that you have. We didn't really know where it was leading us. We didn't know what programmes we would make, but that's part of the joy of it. I think mentors are important. I think one of the things that I feel is I was really lucky to have a boss, my first boss, who was just incredibly even-handed and thoughtful and helpful. And so one of the things I'd say, and I know this is really like really hard, particularly when you're starting off, is, is almost choose your boss carefully. If you can, find yourself in a place that gets you, that encourages you, and that nurtures you. It's always good to try and listen out and gravitate towards those people that you think will bring out what you are. Stick to those people and learn everything you can from them. I think the, the independent sector, the independent production sector, it's, it's very competitive, but always I've found that independent companies have an awful lot in common with each other. It's a very friendly rivalry. Collaboration is incredibly important, but also the point about the creative process is you've got to push your own thing and champion it. So finding the balance between collaboration and sheer cold-hearted ambition is, um, is the key. Don't be put off by anybody who says you can't start your own company, the the whole sector is consolidated into a few super indies, you're too late to the party. Nonsense. There is now and there always be, will be room for new successful independent companies if you've got the, the, the kind of the right aptitude, ambition, prepared to work hard and most of all you got great creative ideas. And I think one of the things if I'm truthful and honest is that there's something wonderful about having a company um, with extraordinarily talented people in it that didn't used to exist now does and, so, and makes wonderful content that, that much you know a lot of which will last for years to come. There's something amazing about creating something from nothing. People will sometimes talk about whether it's a good or a bad time to start an indie. I don't think it's ever a bad time or particularly a good time. It all depends on who you are, what you want to do, what your ideas are and what sort of programs you're going to make.
What's the thing you really, really feel that you can bring to the industry? The story, whether that's a entertainment show or a drama, it doesn't really matter. What's the thing you feel you're desperate and want to, to make and, and to pursue? Because one day when you get your chance, there's nothing like an authentic story, an authentic belief and desire in a show to make people think, right, we're going to get behind this person and, and help them. So that's what I would say you should hang on to.